Hello. This is the video for logarithmic equations. All right. When we're solving logarithmic equations, we first want to note how many log expressions are in the equation. If the equation only has one logarithmic expression in it, then the easiest way to solve the equation is to convert it to exponential form. Let's take a look at an example or a couple. If we wanted to solve this first example here, we're going to solve for the value of the variable. Of course, it makes it true. And we have log base 10 of 4z. I guess we should have parentheses around that. The easiest way to solve this would be to convert it over to exponential form, right? So we'll start with the base, log base 10 of 4z equals 2. Let's write that as an exponential equation. 10 to the, square, uh, to the second power is equal to 4 times z, right? 10, 10 to the second power, of course, is 100, so we should simplify that a little bit 100 equals 4z then to solve for z all we need to do is divide by 4 so we see that z is equal to 25. okay here's another example 2 times the natural log of 3x is equal to 2. okay well i don't see a base there that's the natural log right but natural log is log base e let me just go ahead and rewrite that with a base before I convert it. So this would then be 2 times the log base e of 3x, and that's going to be equal to 2. All right. Now, if we convert this, gosh, we'd have e squared equals. But what about this 2 in front? I have a problem here. I cannot convert this logarithmic expression. Uh, to an exponential expression while it has the coefficient. I need to use the power rule. I need to use the power rule and I need to bring up that exponent first. All right. So this then would become the log base e of 3x squared is equal to 2. All right. Now I can go ahead and convert that. Now I can convert that. I can say e to the second power is equal to 3x squared. Okay. I want to be really, really careful with these parentheses here because it's not just the x that's being squared, um, but the 3 is also being squared, right? The 3 is also being squared. So you know, I might be tempted to take the square root of both sides here, but, but I really don't want to do that. I want to simplify first. Um, I want to simplify this first, so this will become e squared equals, and I want to distribute that, or I want to apply that exponent of 2 to both products in there. So e squared then becomes 3 squared times x squared, which of course is 9x squared, right? Then I can go ahead and divide both sides by 9. So then x squared is e squared over 9. Let's finish up here. I'm just going to switch our order. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and take the square root of both sides. So then x is equal to the square root of e squared over 9. Now, normally when I'm solving using the square root method here, taking the square root of both sides, I want to say plus or minus, plus or minus. So maybe I should do that here. Let's say it's plus or minus. Although this negative, this negative, we may end up throwing that out, right? Because the argument of a logarithm has to be positive, right? I could simplify that a little bit. I could simplify that a little bit. Uh, the square root of e squared is e. So my two solutions here then would be uh, e over the square root of 9, that's 3, or negative e over 3. But when I go and check that against the domain, 3 times 
a negative number is going to be a negative number. So my negative uh, e over 3, I need to throw that out. That's not going to be a solution. Okay, so my exact answer here then is e over 3. If I want to approximate that, use my calculator here, e over 3 is going to be d divided by 3.9061. Okay, so converting to exponential form is the easiest way to solve an ex, uh, a logarithmic equation when there's only one log expression in the equation. However, always keep in mind that if the logarithm has a product in front of it, or I like to think about that as a coefficient, you need to bring it up and make it, a, um, make it a, an exponent first. Now, by the way, you might be saying, well, could I have taken the square root of both sides here? I could, I could have, because I'm not gonna care about that negative, but I chose not to because I just wanted to follow the, the more uh, generally accepted um, procedures in algebra. All right, so what do we do with equations that have more than one logarithmic expression in them? Well, if there's two logarithmic expressions, then I can solve it using the one-to-one -one property. If there's two logarithmic expressions, I can put one on one side of the equation and the other on the other side of the equation. And if I have the same bases, then if the log base A of something equals the log base A of something else, then the something has to equal the something else, right? Or if log base A of X equals log base A of Y, then X has to equal Y. All right, so if I can manipulate an equation to take this form where one log equals another log, then I can use this one to one property and I know that those arguments have to be the same. All right, let's look at a couple of examples using this method to solve a logarithmic equation. In this first example, I have log base 2 of 2x minus 3 equal to log base 2 of x plus 4. All right, well, since, since the bases are the same, and that two, and they're both base two, right? And I have a one log equal to one log. I know now that the arguments have to be the same. The two x minus three has to equal the x plus four, right? Some people say you can drop the logs or they, they kind of cross them out. I don't like to do that because, you know, we're not doing that. We're not dropping the log. We're using the one-to-one -one property here to say that those arguments have to be equal. So two x, minus three is equal to x plus four. Now to solve for our variable, we have a simple algebraic equation. We'll just subtract that x from both sides and we'll add that three to both sides and we'll see that x equals seven. Right. Another one over here, it's a natural log. Doesn't matter what the base is as long as they're the same. Natural log equals natural log, log base E equals log base E. Since those uh, logs are the same, they have the same base, the base is E, and I can say that the arguments are the same by the one-to-one -one property. So 3x minus 5 equals 2x plus 1. Very simple algebraic equation to solve. Subtract that 2x from both sides and add a 5, and I see that x equals 6. Okay, I'm checking always against my, um, my ar I'm checking these values and my arguments always to make sure that they, they, um, they satisfy the domain. The arguments always have to say positive, right? 3x, 3 times 6, that's 18 minus 5, 13, that's positive. 2x, 2 times 6, that's 12 plus 1, 13, that's positive, right? Here when x is 7, we have 14 minus 3 or 7 plus 4, also positive. Okay. What happens if we have more than one logarithmic expression in an equation? Like this example here. This has, look at this, this has three log expressions. We have log base 10 of x plus 6 minus log base 10 of x equal to log base 10 of x plus 2, right? Well, I can use my properties of logarithms here to condense the left-hand side, to condense the left-hand side so that I have one log equal one log, and then I can use the one-to-one -one property. So I have a difference of logs. I can con condense that to a log of a quotient, right? I could rewrite this 
left-hand side of the equation has the log base 10 of, uh, let's see, the numerator will be the positive log, so it'll be x plus 6 over the denominator will be the argument of the negative log, x plus 6 over x, okay, equal to log base 10 of x plus 2. Okay, so using the property of logarithms, I condensed those two logs on the left-hand side, and now I can go ahead and use the one-to-one -one product uh, property and know that these arguments are equal. Mm -hmm. So x plus 6 over x equals x plus 2, and now I just need to solve for x. Well, let's see, my variables in the denominator. Let's get it out. Let's multiply both sides by x first. I'll divide out on the left-hand side, and I'll have x plus 6 equal to x times x plus 2. All right, let's go ahead and distribute that x. So it'll be x squared plus 2x. All right, that turned quadratic on us. So let's set it equal to 0. Let's subtract an x and a 6 from both sides. So then we'll have 0 is equal to x squared. 2x minus x is x so plus x minus 6. Okay, that's going to factor for us. So then 0 equals x plus 3 times x minus 2. Then using the zero product principle, I have two solutions here. If x plus 3 equals 0, when I subtract 3 from both sides, x equals negative 3. If x minus 2 equals 0, when I add 2 to both sides, x equals 2. All right, can we have two solutions to a logarithmic equation? We know we often have two solutions to uh, a quadratic equation, right? When we graph quadratics, they're parabolas. You know, quadratics, when we graph them, they're parabolas, right? So let's see, this one's an upward opening parabola. So, so you know, I mean, it might, it might look something like this, and those are two solutions, right? When it's equal to zero. Does that happen with logarithmic? What does a graph of logarithm look like? Hmm. Log graph. Looks like that, doesn't it? I'm not showing my, there they are. Log, log graph looks like that. Suspicious, isn't it? Well, look at these values. Let's check them against the domain. If x is negative 3, negative numbers, solutions that are negative are often suspicious. Let's try it. Well, negative 3 plus 6 is positive 3, so that doesn't violate the domain in that first expression. But look at the second one. If x is negative 3, we have, we have an argument for a logarithm that's negative, and that is not allowed. So this is an extraneous solution. We need to throw that out. The only good solution here is x equals 2. Okay? Let's look at one more example. Look at this guy. Three logs again. We can't solve an equation that has three. We need to have one or two. We could, we could, we could, we could move the logarithm on the right hand side over, can combine them all and solve that way. Uh, it's probably easier to just go ahead and combine the two logarithms on the left hand side and use the one to one property. They're all base two, so that's good. When I combine log base two of x, uh, plus log base 2 of x plus 3. I've got a sum to product going on here. So I'll have log base 2 of x times x plus 3 equal to the log base 2 of x plus 8. Okay, now I've got one log equal to one log. So my arguments, my arguments have to be equal by the one-to-one -one property. So we can then say x times x plus 3, or let's go ahead and distribute that x. So x squared plus 3x equals x plus 8. Uh, turn quadratic, so let's set it equal to 0. We'll subtract the x and the 8 from both sides. So we'll have x squared plus 2x minus 8 equals 0. OK, that one's going to factor. Let's go ahead and factor that. That'll factor into x plus 4 times x minus 2. 
find the zero product principle, if x plus 4 equals 0, x equals negative 4, if x minus 2 equals 0, x equals 2, two solutions, the negatives are suspect, aren't they? Let's check it out. Oh, yeah, look, here's an argument that's just x. Look at that. There's an, a negative 4 cannot be the argument to a logarithm. Arguments to logarithms have to stay positive. So we throw this one out. That's an extraneous solution. We don't want that one. Our answer here is simply x minus x equals 2. And this ends the lecture on logarithmic equations.